What's going on guys, Poison Knock here, back again with another video on Bray Wyatt has been released from WWE once again, another independent contractor has been released from WWE thanks to Vince McMahon and um, this is a Vince McMahon, I want to quote from the Slank Daddy on this one this is an old Vince McMahon, this is the Vince McMahon who's just an old man and the guy that's running out of patience that he has spent so many years um, investing in these guys, especially a brown, uh, like a, a Bray Wyatt and then he just releases the guy like it was eight years ago this month that Bray Wyatt debuted on the main roster. And you look at that Bray Wyatt when he was exciting and it was something different on television to look at this Bray Wyatt that's just left WWE 20, uh, 21. This fucking thing that he's left as, the bad booking decisions he's had in his in his main roster room, which is he, which is really, he's had some up and down kind of things on the main roster. Like he started off really hard with obviously the whole a white family character from 2013 to like 2020 and then he was the fiend and then he had that bullshit finish with Seth Rollins because they wanted to protect Seth Rollins as his fucking fit, a baby face and they had him in a, in a shitty ass hell in a cell finish which I'd never seen an entire of my life watching wrestling a hell in a cell finish with a DQ fucking finish what the fuck are you doing Vince? who fucking books this shit? well I know he books it, it's fucking this man because here's a guy that's like oh this is such good shit Pal, when it's not good shit, pal. If it was such good shit, why have you lost a fraction of your you in over a decade? Or even more, I was looking at the rings the past a couple of days ago from 10 years ago. You were 3.4, now you know you can barely get over a million. What the hell is going on? What the hell is going on with you, Vince? Come on. This whole thing, and people defend Vince, saying, oh, and, and these people who say Vince should retire are the same ones who were saying that. Oh, we were clapping Vince a couple weeks ago on Smack saying, No chance in hell you guys make me sick because you are the ones that are that are endorsing and, and giving com mo uh, money to this company. You're, you're still buying the merch, you're still doing this because you know these fans are fickle, wrestling fans are fickle. They're gonna do they're, they're gonna do whatever because they don't give they don't give a damn. You know these are the same fans that, like I said, were trying to visit man, no chance now. Are the same ones wanting them to retire, so something so fickle and can be consistent with your opinions. And and just for Vince man, he's giving Tony Khan a character like a Bray White that should be on primetime TV. And Tony Khan's like, oh my god, what a gold mine, what a great app. Oh, acquisition I could have with a Bray Wyatt. Look at the feuds I could have him. Obviously, the logical thing is that he's going to be with the Dark Order and and stuff. Obviously, which would be kind of with his you know, old cat he had. But the feuds he could have with Darby Allen and whoever, Cody Rhodes, because of politics. But joking aside, he um Bray Wyatt could have a really good like a resurrection of his career in AEW and he's got what last days he's got create control he's not gonna have to go through the approval of Vince McMahon and all this other bullshit and then politics and well he's gonna have politics Cody but, but you know what I mean he's not gonna go through all the fucking out of date creative control what Vince has and he's gonna have his own ideas and he's gonna obviously help AEW and then maybe move the needle for them and I know Vince is saying now publicly they're not competition and I know they're not competition, they've only been around two years. But maybe if they start, if they get some like a CM Punk, Brian Danielson, and then they keep actually getting more, and they actually get over a million viewers, and they get to two million viewers, and they start building more audiences in the next five to ten years, then you've got to think they may be competition now. And I'm not saying Bray Wyatt's one of those guys like in Austin, where when Austin was. Um, a rising star, like they, they, um, they said they were letting go because they didn't know how to utilize Steve Austin. I'm not saying he's kind of like that, but he's a guy that could move the needle and actually could get you raised because he has been on uh, WTV and they're like, that's Bray Wyatt, he's feeling with whoever. And he, you know, he can have so many good views, like I said. Um, but I understand he was going through some um, mental health problems with the passing of John Huber. Um, Brody Lee, and you could have said, well, instead of saying this whole bullshit about pay cuts and whatever, you could say, instead of you, instead of us taking, instead of you, instead of them, um, releasing him and giving him to 
to AEW. How about we keep you off TV for a year till you get your head fixed and you get the help that you need and we're going to keep paying you on the royalty checks and, and the pay cut deal because you're obviously going to be featured on that with the pay fees and whatever, the royalty checks. And we're going to keep paying you money but you can sit at home for a year and get your head straight and you know get your mindset hopefully ready but Vince is like we're doing pay cuts because it's we're independent contractors but basically we're not independent contractors because basically you know what I'm because basically you're independent contractors but you're kind of not independent contractors because it's contract to contract Vince this whole thing that Vince has gone on for years of oh they're independent contractors. It's, co it's employee to employee events. But none of these wrestlers stand up to Vince McMahon. All these fucking shooting interviews and all these fucking things I've heard on the internet over the years. Oh my god, unionization. All this other fucking bullshit. What, what happened to all the wrestlers' unionization and they was actually sticking to Vince? Like in, like in sports, like in an NBA or an NFL. When there is kind of like a union and they have more rights and, and they treat them like humans instead of animal, instead of like independent contracts when it's actually employees to employees and bullshit like that. Like, you know, all these wrestlers talk about it, wrestlers court and bullshit like that, but these wrestlers are all crying about it on these shooting interviews. I was saying, oh my god, it was me, oh my god, and all these marks that fucking interview these guys. The, um, oh, like, just watching them, or just watching these fucking idiots bitch and complain because the biggest marks in the wrestling business are the wrestlers themselves every time they get triggered they're like oh my god we're not going to talk about um, union, um, um, becoming a union and actually embracing each other and and sticking to Vince because Vince has been doing this for decades and, no, and for decades and decades and nobody's ever stuck to Vince man 